Welcome to Friday TGIF. It's the 12th day of September 2025. Your day with a podcast brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, that Pacific trough of low pressure, which we've been talking about all week, well, we're going to talk about it through the weekend. Yes, it's finally moving, but very slowly. So there'll be plenty of moisture in the air as evidenced by that photo right there. So this will keep the weather unsettled. If you're planning outdoor activities, travel, you just got to keep in mind that while nothing really bad's coming, there's going to be showers and thunderstorms around, a few strong ones, and that'll be something that we'll probably have next week as well. There are a couple of more troughs coming in off the West Coast next week. So next week is really not gonna be that much different than this week. Comfortable temperatures, scattered showers and thunderstorms off and on. Could have a bit of a stronger Pacific system coming in next weekend. Question marks though on that one, but we'll kind of circle the calendar that next weekend system might be a little bit more robust. We'll just have to wait and see. Also for you weather nerds, at the end, I'm going to give you a link to a very interesting article on a Southern Hemisphere stratospheric warming event that may have some connections to the Northern Hemisphere this winter. We'll talk about that at the end of the podcast here. Forgot to throw this photo in earlier in the week, a great shot from still a lot of fire activity. And boy, these guys are busy, as you can see up there in the title above. Hopefully this pattern of off and on showers and thunderstorms, relative coolness will continue to help firefighters get the upper hand, but it's still going to be busy out there. Another day, another evening of very photogenic cloud photos from these showers and thunderstorms that have been building up. Also the lack of thick fire smoke making for really good visibility. And so we're just getting some great photos coming in. Here's some angry looking skies there in the Pinedale area from some Virga that's getting ripped around by some strong gusty winds coming out of some of those showers and thunderstorms. Same thing in southeastern Wyoming yesterday. And the beginnings yesterday, early in the day, of clouds and showers and thunderstorms in Black Hills country led to some pretty spectacular development of showers and thunderstorms, isolated ones, up in western South Dakota yesterday. Look at that photo, just gorgeous. And that same thunderstorm was visible from a lot of different angles. So this one from Deadwood, this is the same thunderstorm from the Piedmont area. You can see the sun catching the top of the cloud there. And then, even better, let's put it in motion and you can see later that evening as those isolated thunderstorms developed, this got going and produced a lot of lightning. It kept going well into the evening and nighttime hours, all the way down into the Lake McConaughey area of Nebraska as well. And then kind of stormy up in northwestern Wyoming. This is near the Crandall area on the leading edge of that Pacific trough. And we're going to be dealing with that again today. So showers and thunderstorms today and Saturday in particular, but even out into the plains on Sunday as well. Just beautiful cloudscapes. And Really, to have this much moisture in the lower levels in September, you don't see that very often. You can really see the moisture in the sky there. And then down into western Colorado, yes, it rained in many areas of western and southern and southwest Colorado yesterday. A lot of flash flood warnings, and as you'll see in a minute, flood watches continue for that part of Colorado. Whether it's there or down into Leadville, where David reported three separate thunderstorm events yesterday. And then a couple of wonderful shots from the Montrose, Colorado area. Again, that area frequented by shower and thunderstorm activity yesterday, leading to some really good photo opportunities. Thanks, Ken, for sending that in. Today, the upper level low is right here. For most of the week, it's been right here. So not a lot of movement here since Monday, but now it's beginning to move. You can see the moisture that is out ahead of it. You can see there's a feed of moisture getting brought in from the counterclockwise circulation, drawing that moisture out of Mexico into New Mexico and Colorado, and then further northward. So the trough kind of dumbbells right now 
with two systems like this, southwest flow aloft continues. Moisture from the Pacific comes on in. So this is today and this is Sunday. So we're going to deal with this system for the next three days. Next three days look like this. Showers and thunderstorms will be widespread. Very much similar to what happened yesterday. Just taking maybe the thunderstorms a tad further east. But essentially, today is a repeat of what we had on Thursday. Saturday, the axis of the heavier thunderstorms will go out a little bit further east. But there's going to be showers and thunderstorms still underneath the trough as it heads eastbound. And then Sunday, you can see that the trough is moving further east. But there's still going to be showers and thunderstorms on the plains. There's going to be more activity here on Sunday than the model is showing. But the trough is moving, only to wait for the next one to come in behind it. Flood watches remain in effect for many areas of western Colorado. And now they've issued flash flood watches for north central and northwest New Mexico as well as we go through the next 24 hours. Between now and Sunday, you can see heavier rain with the heavier thunderstorms up here in the Dakotas, down here into western areas of Colorado and New Mexico, and then scattered showers and thunderstorms will be noted elsewhere. And yes, the higher mountains, now these are altitudes that are pretty far up there. You gotta get up 11, 12,000 feet or so to see some snow, but there will be some of that through the course of the weekend in some parts of the west. Next week, okay, we go into next week. This is next Wednesday. It kind of looks the same, doesn't it? We have another Pacific trough coming right here, another one coming in behind it, northwest of Vancouver. So we're going to spend next week in a similar situation. We're cut off from any really cold Canadian air. It's Pacific dominated, so it's not going to be hot, not going to be cold. It's going to be just about near average temperature. Some days a little bit above, some days a little bit low, but pretty comfortable for the middle of September. And this area of low pressure will just keep the opportunity for showers and thunderstorms going. We're also going to get a little bit of subtropical moisture coming up off the west coast of Mexico as well. By late next week, so this is a week from today, high pressure wants to build in the eastern Pacific and some type of trough wants to come into the west, a bit of a stronger one next weekend. However, as we've been doing, drawing a question mark, we've been doing that a lot. Still not really sure the models have a really good handle on things a week out from now, but next weekend something is likely going to come on through. But even in this time frame, a week from Friday, there's still, I just don't see, there's just not a lot of cold Canadian air here yet. So the cooler weather that we're going to get will be coming in from the Northwest Pacific, the Northeast Pacific rather into the region. Now for you weather nerds out there, a very interesting uh, article if you want to read it, and I suggest you read it. Uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, is that we talk about stratospheric warming events in the Northern Hemisphere during the course of the winter and how that really can affect a winter pattern. Well, the Southern Hemisphere gets them too, not as frequently, but they're about ready to be going into one. And that's going to cause a lot of cold weather here at the tail end of winter in parts of the Southern Hemisphere, Australia in particular. And the Southern Hemisphere has had a really cold winter. Now, where I want the opportunity for you to read this is that for those of you who have looked at my long range outlook for the winter, we talked a lot about the fall of 2019 and the winter of 2020 is kind of a preview of maybe what will happen this winter. And it brings up that year range in connection with a stratospheric warming event that may impact the northern hemisphere. At least we've seen it in the past. It's an interesting read. You weather nerds out there will love it. You can see the long link here I have. I will also link this in the description section of the YouTube page if you want to go ahead and take a look at that article. This is a really good website out of Europe. They talk about a lot of really neat things and it's a website to go back and frequently look at to learn more about how the weather works. Have yourself a great weekend.